Shalom, I'm Messianic Rabbi Zef Porat, and welcome to a special outreach update from Jerusalem, Israel. We're living in prophetic and exciting times. There has never been a generation closer to the second coming of Jesus Yeshua than this generation. We're not setting any dates, but we know that the time is near. We know that the veil is being lifted. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, and Jews and Arabs are being saved like never before. The gospel is going forth. And the more revival, the more the enemy is losing it. Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. So the dragon was enraged with the woman and went off to make war with the rest of her children who keep the commandments of God, his word, and hold to the testimony of Jesus, Yeshua. This is spiritual warfare. The more revival, the more gospel, the more the dragons enrage. Praise Yeshua, Jesus. God, Jews who do not believe in Yeshua, in Jesus, as the Messiah, as God, take at face value what rabbis have to say. But the Bible says to trust only in God. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. The Bible says to trust in Yeshua, in Jesus. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 26. He who trusts in himself is a fool, but one who walks in wisdom will be safe. As believers in Yeshua, in Jesus, we understand that they do not have the Holy Spirit. We understand that the veil is still covering their face. We love the Jewish people and all mankind, but we cannot love people over righteousness. The true gospel must be preached. As the Messiah of Israel ministry team were praying, I began sharing this message all through the Kotel area, the Western Wall in Jerusalem, asking people, who do you trust? This opened the door for many conversations about the gospel of Yeshua. In the Kotel area, there is also a synagogue in a cave. As I was standing over there preaching the gospel, a very known rabbi from Jerusalem, Harav Tzadok Manor, Rabbi Tzadok Manor, came out of the synagogue in the Kotel area, furious with anger. He approached me and said, I know who you are. You are a dangerous Christian. You are not a Jew. I want you to leave this area now. And he pointed his finger with anger toward the exit. It was clear this was getting to be a dangerous situation that could exhalate the violence. When this happened, the Holy Spirit gave me a word. Isaiah chapter 49 verse 2. He has made my mouth like a sharp sword. He hid me in the shadow of his hand. He made me like a polished arrow. He hid me in his quiver. The Holy Spirit was confirming, Do not be afraid, continue to preach. Rabbi Manor turned to me and said, I know who you are, and he called me by name. And I turned to him and I said, And I know who you are, Harav David Manor. He was puzzled. I then asked him, But do you know who God is? He continued to say, I told you to leave. Moshe from the ministry team was raising his hand in prayer as the rabbi was shouting. I told the rabbi, I will not leave as I have been called here by the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I then asked Rabbi Tzadik Mano, who has believed the message? At that moment, something supernatural happened. The rabbi became calm and asked me, what do you mean? I told the rabbi, let's open the Bible and examine. He became defensive and said, I don't want you to open the Bible. You read the Bible in a different way. There was someone there, another Jew listening, and he told the rabbi, open the Bible with him. Why are you afraid? This was a supernatural event. Praise Yeshua. The rabbi didn't have a choice and he agreed. I opened the Bible to the book of Isaiah chapter 53 and began to read with the rabbi, who has believed our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and a familiar with pain, like one from whom people hide their faces. He was despised and we held him in low esteem. Surely, he took our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed 
for our iniquities, and the punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. This is what I asked you before. Who has believed our message? The other Jew was calling out, Who is this rabbi? Who is this rabbi? Tell us. This same rabbi that wanted to toss me out of the Kotel area was now speechless. The power of the Holy Spirit was hovering over the Kotel area. I then told the rabbi and those listening, this is his speaking about the Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus, who died on the tree on the cross for our sins. He rose on the third day, and by his blood, if we repent and believe, we have full redemption of sins and eternal life. And this is the message. Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? You came out here shouting and furious because you knew the truth. But God said, I love my people. The truth must be proclaimed. This very aggressive rabbi was now being calm. We were able to read more Bible passages together. This is the truth, and the truth will do one thing, and that is set you free. I then turned the Bible to Psalms 119, verse 45, and read out loud with the rabbi. I gain perfect freedom by following your teachings. The word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword, and the only way to be set free is by following his word, not man-centered religion. I gave the rabbi and others my contact information and told them to call and do not be afraid. Yeshua is calling them to salvation. I then read together with them Psalms 27 verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? And in Hebrew, the Lord is my light and my Yeshua. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Because the word for salvation in Hebrew is Yeshua, Jesus. When the rabbi read this, he was trembling all over. He was shaking. I've never seen anything like it. Fully convicted by the Holy Spirit, but was in fear. We pray for his salvation and for all those that heard the gospel. And we will not be intimidated and continue to preach the gospel no matter what. El Omaim, Romans chapter 1, verse 16. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. We will continue to preach the word of God, Achekol Israel Ivasha, until all Israel shall be saved. Romans 11, 26. And for Zion's sake, we will not keep silent. Isaiah 62, verse 1. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet. Till her vindication shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. And the word in Hebrew for salvation is Yeshua, Jesus. So it reads like this in Hebrew. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet. Till her vindication shines out like the dawn, her Yeshua like a blazing torch. Let's continue to stand together as the one new man, Ephesians 2.15, bring the gospel back to Yerushalayim, back to Jerusalem, and go home. Until next time, I'm Messianic Rabbi Zev Porat sending you blessings from Yerushalayim, from Jerusalem, Israel, in the mighty name of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Aryeh Yehuda, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Great I Am, Jesus Yeshua. Amen.